We're on section 7.7. .7. This is writing chemical equations for reactions and solution. There are different types of chemical equations. Um, what we tend to think of as a regular equation is called a molecular equation. And this is going to show the complete neutral formulas for all of the compounds and elements that are in the reaction. Uh, this is what we typically think of when we think of a chemical reaction equation. Um, and then there's also ionic equations. There's the complete ionic equation. This is going to show all of the ionic compounds as ions because a soluble ionic compound will dissolve in water. It separates into its individual ions. So the complete ionic equation is showing how things actually are in the reaction mixture. So what we do is we're going to separate aqueous ionic compounds into their constituent ions. So things like sodium chloride. Let me get my pen going here. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. So, you know, something like sodium chloride, aqueous. It's an ionic compound. It's dissolved in water. So the way it actually is in the solution is sodium ions and chloride ions. If we see a, if we have a compound or, or something in our equation that is a solid, a liquid, or a gas, you do not separate those into individual elements or ions. Only things that have AQ as their state symbol. It's a little bit of a simplification, but it's good enough for 3A. When we look at that complete ionic equation, we often see that there are ions that are present on both sides of the arrow. They're present as a reactant and they're present as a product. They're not changed. These are called spectator ions. Okay? It's a little bit like going to a boxing match. And in the ring, there's two guys trying to punch each other's lights out, right? They come out afterwards, and they're all banged up and bruised. They've got black eye, bloody nose, split lip, whatever. You were a spectator in the audience. You were there. You were watching what happened. But you come out, and nothing has happened to you. You were a spectator. You are unchanged, unless things get really out of hand in the audience, right? So the spectator ions are the ones that come to the reaction and nothing really happens to them. And after the reaction occurs, they're still there. So we often will cross them out because they didn't actually participate. They weren't necessary for the reaction. And when we get rid of the spectators, what we get is the net ionic equation. This shows only those species that actually participate in the reaction. Now, what do we mean in chemistry when we use the word species? It's a little different than what they talk about in biology. A species is a kind or sort of thing. In chemistry, it means all the different molecules and ions. We get really tired of saying atoms, molecules, and ions, you know, to cover everything. And so we'll often say species, just the different types of chemical substances in the reaction. So this is a summary. Um, you need to know what these uh, equation types are. We're going to go through some examples. The molecular equation shows all the complete neutral formulas for everything that's in the reaction. The complete ionic equation shows all the species as they're actually present. And the net ionic equation shows only those species that actually participate. The complete ionic equation and the net ionic <coughs> equation are a little bit like your paycheck. There's the gross paycheck, which shows the money that you earned. And then there's the net paycheck, which is what you actually get to take home, right? Because they take off for FICA and, and uh, taxes and all this stuff, right? And sometimes for retirement. You don't get to take that home. The, the net ionic equation, didn't mean to do that. The net ionic equation is um, what you get to take home the stuff that actually reacts. So let's do some examples. So here's a reaction occurring in aqueous solution. And we're instructed, this is the molecular equation. 
uh, we're instructed to write a complete ionic equation and a net ionic equation for the reaction. So to do a complete ionic equation, I'm going to look at these guys, um, the reactants and the products, and anywhere that we have AQ for aqueous, we're going to separate those things into their ions. Okay. Now technically, this is not an ionic compound, this is an acid. Strong acids separate into their ions, weak acids do not. We're not going to get hung up on that in Chem 3A. If it says aqueous, we're going to go ahead and break it into its ions. Um, here's calcium hydroxide. This is an ionic compound, it's dissolved in water. Here, H2O, the state symbol is liquid. Liquid, solid, or gas, leave it alone. If it says AQ, separate it into ions. So we need to look at this first one that's AQ and identify what are the two ions in that compound. And this kind of goes back to chapter 5 again. So HBr, remember you can only break it into two pieces. There's a cation and an anion. This one is, um, there's no temptation to break it up more because there's only two elements. So you're going to have H and you're going to have Br. And then we need to identify what the charges on those things are. Well, that's where the periodic table comes in. Hydrogen is in group 1, and uh, so it has a plus 1, and bromine is in group 7a, so it's minus 1. Now, technically, you should write the state symbols for these. It gets really, really long, and uh, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to worry about those. Here, this, is, this 2 is telling me I have two of these units. Each unit contains one hydrogen and one bromine. So if I have two units, that means I have two hydrogens and two bromide ions. You don't have to carry that down, but if you do, then you don't have to go back and balance it when you're finished. So I prefer to do it that way. And this one is also ionic, and we need to separate it into ions. So we've got calcium, and we've got hydroxide, two ions. So calcium is Ca2+, and then we have the rest of it, OH, and that's when you have to memorize, and it has a negative one charge. From the formula, knowing the charge on calcium, you could figure out the charge on the hydroxide if you needed to. How many hydroxide ions are in each of these units? Two. So I want to put a two here. There's only one calcium, and so I just wrote calcium. And then we have the arrow. Do I split H2O into ions? No, I don't. So that's going to be two H2O. And then the last one... Calcium and bromine, that's aqueous, so I'm going to split that into ions. So here's calcium again, and there's two bromide ions. There's no way I could have gotten all the state symbols in there on one line. Always go back and look, look at it. Make sure it's balanced, because when you, when you convert a molecular equation into a total ion, or a complete ionic equation, you should still have a balanced chemical equation. So here I've got um, two hydrogens and two hydrogens, a total of four hydrogens on the left side and two times two, four hydrogens on the right side. I've got two BRs and two BRs. I've got a calcium and a calcium. I've got two oxygens here and two oxygens in there. If you don't carry these subscripts down right, then you'll have to balance it and fix it up at the end. So that's the complete ionic equation. Any questions? What do we do to make the net ionic equation? We're going to look at this and see if there are any ions that do not get changed from the left side of the arrow to the right side. So here we've got H plus. He's on the left side. We don't see him on the right. So something happened to him. Here's a 2Br minus... Um, oh, look, Br minus is still over here. 
that's a spectator ion. It didn't participate in the reaction. So I'm going to just cross those off. So that guy goes away, and that one goes away. What's the other spectator ion here? Calcium. Calcium. There's a Ca2 plus as a reactant and a Ca2 plus as a product. Nothing happened to it. This is floating around in solution the whole time. So I'm going to cross those guys off. Well, that's kind of messy. So now we need to copy this over again um, without the spectator ions. Um, I'm going to have a little more room this time, and so I'm going to put my state symbols back. If it says include the state symbols, then you have to include the state symbols. So these, these ions are going to be aqueous. Water is going to be a liquid, just like it was in the original um, equation. So 2H plus plus 2OH minus um, forms 2H2O. That's the net ionic equation. Is that the best way we could write that equation? We could divide all the coefficients by 2, right, and s kind of simplify it. Because this is 2 of these to 2 of those makes 2 of, uh, of this. That's not the simplest way. So I'm going to get rid of those through my magic eraser. And there we have our simplest net ionic equation. Any questions? Let's do another one. Oh, maybe not. Um, we'll do some more examples in a little bit. I know there's more in here.